welcome. Um, yeah, my name is Sydney of Adventure Fiber Works is the website that I run with my friend Carolyn or on Instagram as Mountain Heather Creative. And yeah, welcome to my first knitting podcast. Um, my plan with this, today we're just going to do classics of what I finished this past month in May, um, what's on the needles right now, and then where I spent all my money, which was dangerous this month. Um, but in the future, I think this is kind of going to branch more into crafting and creating in general, because I do sewing and weaving, and I'm learning how to spin, and, and, and. Um, so we kind of come probably more of a multi-craft with a really focus on knitting, because that's my love at the moment. Yes, yeah, so welcome. Um, yeah, let's dive right in. The first thing I finished this month, I, oh man, I think I started this in like January, so it's been, I've been hauling it around for a while, is the uh, field, yeah, field day jacket from Ozetta Knitwear. Um, it's super oversized. It's super cozy. I will put in some footage where you can actually see the whole thing because it's quite big. Um, I don't know why I decided to do a medium. Typically, I'm a small with her patterns because they're super oversized. Uh, so it's like really oversized, but it was it was too much work to back out. I was just like, it's fine. I'll deal with it. Um, and honestly, it's super cozy. It's definitely going to be more of like a around the campfire, around the house kind of sweater, um, which is great for me. That was kind of what I needed to fill when um, I needed in my wardrobe at the time. It is made with a super squishy um, custom woolen mills, which is a local mill that we have here in Alberta. It processes a lot of um, like small Canadian wool makers wool. Uh, so it's super cool. It's local. Um, this is 100% Canadian wool, as far as I, I know from their site. Um, and Canadian wool can tend to be a little rough just because of the harsher winters. So they use a mule spinner, which is just a kind of process for um, spinning the wool. And so it turns out quite soft, actually, I find. I don't think it's itchy at all. Uh, it knit up stiff. Um, it probably could have gone on a bigger needle, but um, I love this like super dense, super squishy um, wool that it gave after blocking. It really softened up and really bloomed. So uh, if you haven't used theirs, it's it's really nice. I like it. Um, they have naturally dyed wool too, uh, which is pretty cool. I like to dabble with that at some point, um, but their natural lines are really nice. They're really soft considering where the wool's coming from. Um, so yeah, I would check them out for sure, especially if you're interested in local wool. Um, I am. <laughs> so it was, it's just really nice. I got to go to the farm and see it. Um, and the, it's available in a lot of stores in Canada too. So I would recommend checking them out. It definitely gets a pass for me. Definitely going to make some more things out of it. Uh, second, we have the, this was my the thing I made in between making this, because I needed a break, I also needed something I could take on the plane that wasn't like huge. So I made the Gallant, Gallant sweater from Kadri um, out of a lovely mohair Surrey alpaca silk mix. Um, I think it's called Alpaca Whisper by Estelle. Um, fairly inexpensive considering like you get a lot in the skein which was really nice because I wasn't in the mood to spend a bunch of money on mohair um so it's super soft you can see the nice like halo-y texture of it um really easy to knit up I think honestly I probably could have got this done in two weeks if I hadn't um gone back to finish this one part way through uh, we kind of flip flop, flip flopped a bit between the two projects to get them done because I just wanted things done at the time. Um, so yeah, I'll put some footage of me wearing this. It's cropped, although I made it longer. I think I just have a longer torso than probably the pattern's designed for because I had to make it longer and it's still quite cropped on me. Um, but yeah, a really easy pattern. There's no short rows or anything in it, so it was just really straightforward. Would recommend as a beginner knitter. Um, and yeah, the yarn's held double, and it's really nice. I'm really happy with it. It has really pretty um, 
decreases. I don't know if you can see them, but it's almost like a bit of an eyelet. It's really pretty. Increases. Raglan, raglan. Um, so yeah, it was, we could have done it in two weeks if we hadn't taken a bunch of time off. And like, that's knitting. I don't know. I don't think I knit like a huge amount. It's kind of like watching TV in the evening. Um, and when I'm bored. <laughs> so yeah, that was a great, super awesome beginner sweater. That was amazing. Um, had a few mistakes, but everything I make has a few mistakes and I'm, I'm cool with it. It's just part of the process. I'm a fairly new um, knitter. Um, so actually, this is my first cardigan and that was my second sweater. So I'm okay if there's mistakes in it. Um, it's still very wearable, so I'm okay. And then the other thing I made, it's been a busy month, um, was a hat. This is the Oslo hat by Petite Knit. Uh, I think I made an extra large and it's a little tight. Um, it's supposed to be for my dad, but it's a little tight on my head. Like I think I would make this size for me. So I don't know what went wrong. Usually my tension's pretty good. Um, I mean, not, we're just going to bring it. My parents both ordered hats from me. Um, they informed me that they wanted hats. So uh, we're meeting up with them on Vancouver Island next month. So I had to get the, them done. So this is supposed to be my dad's. I don't know if it's going to fit. We're going to try it. Maybe it'll stretch and ease in. Uh, this was made with Sansnay's garn. Their Sunday held double. I think you could also do it with the double Sunday. It's the one that the pattern's made and based off of because I know Petite works, Petite Knit works a lot with them. Um, it was funny because I was talking to one of my friends and she goes, oh yeah, I made that hat and it was super oversized when I made it. So I don't know uh, what's up with this one. Uh, I'm a little disappointed um, that I don't think it's going to fit in, but I didn't want to undo it. I can wear it. My partner can wear it. Someone will wear it, I'm sure, because it is it is a really cute hat. It turned out really nice. Um, the color is pretty. Uh, I mean, it's 100% merino, so it feels a little lax. Uh, and it came together. I made it in four days. Uh, we were on a road trip. Well, we went for the long weekend to Banff. Um, so this was my car project. It's so nice doing accessories that like fit in your purse. It's just so refreshing than hauling around a sweater with you. Loved that for me. Um, so now I just have to make my mom's and I've decided I was going to make her this pattern, but uh, because of the weird sizing, I don't know if I trust it. So um, if anyone else has made this hat, uh, please tell me what your experience has been. Um, so I'm making her a different one. She kind of wanted a different style and the construction of this is a little funny. So it has like um, this like reverse row in it. So I think so it folds up easier and she wanted to more wear it like a, like the baggy hats. So this won't work for her. So I'm going to make a different pattern, um, which brings me to things that I'm working on. So I haven't actually started it, but it's in the project bag waiting to go uh, and it's a hat for a mom I'm just doing this ribbed hat from Pearl Soho it's just a free pattern it's a slouchy hat you can fold it up so it's more like a beanie um, she just wants a toque so that's easy I already had the pattern printed out um, I can link it down below because I forget what it's called right now but again it's the Sandy's Sands Nays Gern mm. <laughs> Uh, in this lovely like emerald color. I don't know what color it is. Uh, I can try and find out. I don't know what color this one is too, but it's like very blue. So this emerald color, I think it'll be super pretty. Since it only took me four days to make that hat and this hat is actually um, easier and has less rows in it than the Oslo hat, I'm not super concerned. I honestly think I'm probably gonna knit this in June. Uh, as we're driving to Vancouver to get on the ferry. So, cause it's a 14 mm, hour drive, 12 hour drive. So uh, this might be turned into a June mitt uh, and it's going to be the car thing. Um, but yeah, I'm, it'll be nice just to have something easy to bring with me. I'm obviously bringing other things, but that's what this will probably turn into. Um, 
So yeah, that's that. And then I'm doing my first test knit for B man or Ma B Mandarin's um, Melody Hoffman. She is a designer from France, and she's in love with Plutolope, which I am also in love with unspun yarns, like I think the rest of the internet. Um, so, hmm. this is the yoke as it's going here. I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's like super textured. The um, Plutolope, which looks like, here's some, it comes in cakes if you haven't seen it. Comes in these. So, I'm doing the second size. Um, I honestly, it's so oversized, I probably could have did a size one, but I wasn't sure. Um, so Plutolope is kind of hard to get these days in one solid color, and I needed eight cakes. So we're holding a double with two different colors, which honestly, I'm kind of in love with. Like, I think it's turning out super pretty, like a heathered effect, marled, um, marled or heather, whichever one it is. Um, but yeah, it has these really pretty... We have the mistakes where the eyelets didn't appear, but these little eyelets, um, it's better there. They get like, a, I think it's a crochet feature going through them, so I missed a couple. But I'm not overly concerned. I'm a bit of a fuck it crafter. Like, we'll just figure it out as it goes. <laughs> I'm not a perfectionist, but, um, yeah, this one's coming together really quick. It's on a five and a half needle. So for me, uh, based on the things I've knit, it's quite bulky. Um, like it's kind of almost a chunky knit. Um, but yeah, I'm really pumped for this. We're going on summer and here I am knitting something that's like definitely more of a winter thing. But I couldn't say no to a test knit from her. So uh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> And it's coming together pretty quick. I think I have to have it done by June 30th. So um, I was concerned at first, but I think considering how fast this has gone, this is like a week. Yeah, this is about a week of work, a little less than a week. Um, and I find the yolks the hardest part because you actually have to think about what you're doing and you have to count the rows. So um, I'm not overly concerned. It's just going to be really long. Um, I think it kind of goes down to your mid thigh. It's a the Plutolope, <laughs> it's the tunic of, I can't say it right now, but Icelandic unspun wool. It is itchy. Um, I'm not super sensitive to itchy wool. Uh, this one's definitely on the rougher side. I know some people are fine with it against their skin. This is definitely going to be something that I have to put another shirt underneath it, even just like an oversized t-shirt, just to make sure it's not like right up against um, my skin because it is rough. Uh, it should soften with blocking and with wear as it heats up though, so we'll see how it goes. I figured it's so oversized that it's fine. It won't really matter. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to be doing that one. Kind of fun to do a test knit, just something different. So yeah, these are my colors. I'll try and figure out which colors they are. I think this is the light gray heather and light beige heather. They're both a heathered color, um, but I will put links in the bottom. I got these from Yarn Canada, which is, they ship nationwide. Um, they're based in Calgary, so it was the quickest shipping. And I think some, there's a couple other yarn stores in Canada that do carry these. Um, but I text a ship all over the world and like a bunch of different places have them. So it's not too hard. And I think they're 1250 Canadian a cake and you get 300 meters. So I think that's very reasonable. It's very well priced, especially compared to other unspun wools. Um, I have Manchilope, which is the Spanish unspun wool. And that was $18, I believe, a cake. And then I ordered nuded in which is this whole other thing. We'll get into that. Um, actually, we can get into it right now because that's that's all I'm working on. I really try hard to keep my projects limited to how many I'm working on because I get overwhelmed easy and then nothing gets finished. So I found if I just keep it to one or two and start a new project when I need a break, 
um, that work has been working for me because the soul inside me wants to have five or six projects going at once. Uh, and when she gets her way, things don't go well and things don't get finished. So I've learned, have a main project and when you need a break from it, you can start something else. <laughs> so that's, it's been working. So we're going to keep up with that. So yeah, so not a lot going on. Um, but, oh, let me break that. Yeah, so I joined the Nudidin um, Honor, Honor Reach. My pronunciation's like not great, so please don't judge me on that. Um, they have a Patreon and they only let so many people in the Patreon and then one day I checked it and they had a spot, so I caved. I wasn't planning on doing it, but I was just kind of curious what all the hubbubaloo was about. Um, and they had a public stock um, shop update. Um, over this past weekend uh, in May, so I bought some. Um, I'll feature them next month once I get it, uh, but that it's kind of expensive, and shipping is very expensive, but I, you know, when you just like have to try it, so I did. <laughs> um, yeah, that was one of the things I bought that'll be featured next month when it actually comes in, hopefully. Um, but yes, so Let's do this first. So a couple new acquisitions are a new yarn store opened up in the Edmonton area. It's called Yarn Divas. I was super excited to go and they carry um, this brand called Onion. There you go. Um, and this is their alpaca, merino wool, and nettle, which I thought just sounded super cool, um, especially to have nettle in it. Um, and this is really pretty pink, dusty pink. Um, it's got a bit of a sheen to it and a bit of a halo from the alpaca in it. Um, so I think I have four of these and I'm going to make the Oslo hat, I believe. I'm going to try and loosen my tension up um, a bit, I guess. I'm not a tight knitter, so I don't know what happened with that hat. Uh, I'm going to try and loosen up a bit um, and I guess make a large because I don't think I want to go any smaller. It's already squeezing my brain. Um, out of this really nice pink at some point. Um, yeah, because I don't have a hat this color and now I'm kind of addicted to hats because it was just so quick. Um, so yeah, that's the onion. Does it say what color it is? It's a fingering weight. Uh, yeah, it's color 1204. Um, so nothing too exciting, but I'm, I'm obsessed with dusty pink. So I had to have this. And then next, there was, oh, I think I actually got this in April, but it's still new to me, so we're going to feature it. Um, it's alpaca silk, brushed alpaca silk by Drops. Kind of, um, kind of like a mohair. It's, uh, yeah, alpaca and mulberry silk. Uh, it's super affordable. It was $7 a skein. Oh, if you're curious, this is $13 a skein, so... It's pricey enough. I have a problem. Um, but the drops is known for being inexpensive, which is super great. Um, and yeah, so the plan is to make a cardigan with this. Now, it says it's worsted weight on their website. And like, I, I always double cross-reference um, yarn weights to make sure I'm getting the right one. I want to make the Henry cardigan by Calibri post a photo here um, and people did use this on Ravelry because I checked um, I didn't want to spend a bunch of money but since I made the mohair galant and that was held double I, I want this to be denser because this is just holding it single so I have some just in my stash like a fingering weight single ply cream colored wool it's from custom wool and mills I picked it up on sale so it was a super great price and I'm like I have enough, so I think I'm going to hold this with that because I want it more denser and more plush. Uh, I still think it would be super pretty. It's kind of like this almondy color, off white. Um, so yeah, that's the plan with that. Luckily, I didn't like. If I didn't have that wool, I probably just would have made it up with just the um, alpaca. But since I have it, I'm going to try using it. I'm going to do some swatching, and I think I'll make a 
a podcast or like a podcast episode out of it. Um, we're going to try a couple different things for some cardigans I want in the depth. So that'll be one of them. We'll see how that goes. What else did I get? So, okay. So other than I obviously picked up the Plutolope, um, four of each color for this project. That was also a new acquisition. Um, and it came really quick, which is super great. The, so yeah, this last weekend was the Edmonton Fiber Frolic and it's just a, it's a fiber festival that comes to, uh, is put on in Edmonton. It was amazing. The venue itself, so the actual fiber frolic, um, is just like a bunch of vendors the selling fiber and fiber related products. So a lot of natural, a lot of indie dyers, um, spinning materials, and then lots of, um, vendors selling, uh, funky stitch markers and like everything your heart desires. I didn't spend a lot of money there because it was absolutely insane. Um, and me and my friend got a little, the introvert got overwhelmed and we had to, we were just like, okay, I think we're done. Um, but along with that, the Saturday night, there was an after party at one of the, put these down, um, at one of the yarn shops in the city, which was a lot of fun. I went there, made some new friends. And then the Sunday, there was a yarn crawl. <laughs> where you go to all the local yarn shops like a pub crawl uh so the first one in the morning was little blue fiber stop shop and we all just sat out on the grass and chatted and knitted and that that was a lot of fun it was a good time um and then i we did we did one stop after that but it turned into more just a shopping thing and the next stop was a 40 minute drive so we just ended it there i had spent enough money um so the things I got were, I got, uh, I really want to learn how to spin. I have a spinning wheel. I am learning how to spin. Um, I have a bunch of people who will teach me. We just need to get some time. But um, so of course I buy spinning rowing because um, it's, it's pretty. So I got this beautiful, um, it's like blue baby blue and there's some gray and beige there's like the tiniest hint of purple and white um yeah it's just lovely from two times infinity which is a uh, fiber shop supplier i don't know vendor and this is called delicate spring crocus and it's 85 percent merino and 14 percent silk um and i'm obsessed with baby blue right now as you'll see in a moment. So I had to get this and I got two, yeah, two of these. Um, so I'm really excited. Definitely going to save this until I know how to actually spin so I don't ruin it. But I think like this spun up and then spun, um, applied with like a white um, cream, which is be so pretty. And then I can make like a hat or something, see how much I get out of it. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then, so this I actually got at Fiber Frolic, and then outside Fiber Frolic, there's um, a little yarn shop that they run out of a trailer, and I think they're based out of Red Deer, Alberta, and they kind of travel around to different farmers markets and stuff and set up their stall there. So while I was in there, I have fallen in love with this like coastal summer thing, aesthetic, I guess you could say, and the like baby blue. Uh, sweaters and things people have so I got some blue it's probably a little more pigmented than I would have liked um but it was like $13 a skein it's just a cascade yarn so like nothing super fancy it was just simple it's soft 100% wool and it's in this gorgeous blue color um so I got enough to make a sweater and then I wanted to hold it with mohair so while we were at the after party at Statement Junkie which is one of the stores uh, I got this. It's a Kid Sata, Kid Sata from Prolana. Um, it's a 70% mohair, 30% silk, and it's in their color soft blue, and yeah, just like your basic mohair. And so I think these will look absolutely gorgeous together. If this is just a little lighter, which I'm happy about because it should kind of mute out some of the bright blue in it. Um, I think this is going to be just gorgeous. Oh, and then the other thing I got, got one more thing at Fiber Frolic specifically, 
Um, one of my now friends is a vendor there and they make a really nice art yarn and then they sell weaving products um, and then their new thing is buttons and so I got these gorgeous this is going to focus um, okay here we go um, these gorgeous blue buttons actually I bought the buttons first before I bought the yarn because I knew I wanted a um, blue cardigan so the plan is to make the Aosta card Aosta cardigan by the Knit Pearl Girl and have these together and I am super excited about it. Do I have multiple other cardigans and projects bought the stuff all ready to make them? Yes. Will I make this one next? Probably because like look at it. It's just so pretty. Um, super excited about that. And then one last thing. Then I spent a lot of money. Um, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> I'm okay with this problem. I have been looking for a new needle case. I just have the Knit Picks needles and they're in these. If you have them, they come in these like plastic sleeves and honestly they're falling apart and they're just not nice. So uh, the second stop on the yarn crawl was to a spot called the Fiber Nook and I picked up a new um, needle case. They're, they were displaying like a green one and then the, one of the shop people came over and was like, oh, we have that in a dusty pink. And I was like, <gasps> give it to me. Um, the gremlin came out that likes pink. So, and honestly, I'm in love. So I have the shorty set and like the normal size interchangeable. So this has, I don't know if you can see it, it has labels written out for the different sizes of um, needles. I'm not using them because I just needed it to fit all my needles. Um, I need to get, I think I'm going to make a second one to put my metal needles in. Um, but this is great for this. It has, oh, it has so many pockets. It's got the two pockets up here. Um, it's got ugh, sleeves all through here to put the um, cables. It's got a pocket here. And then it has this cute little keychain where you can keep, it came with some stitch markers, but you can put your stitch markers on it, which I think is just adorable. Um, and a little attention detail. And then it comes with a scissor pouch with the scissors in it already. So I got an extra set of scissors. Um, and then it also has pockets here, which I'm assuming you could put um, bits of things as well as your pattern. You could stick your, stick your patterns in there. So. I'm super pumped about this. Uh, it was a real treat myself, but I had been looking for like a couple months for a new needle thing, so I couldn't get better than this. I hadn't seen anything better than this. Um, and it's by the brand Della Q. I guess they used to be called Namaste um, and recently did a rebrand. So I'm not sure what the product is. I think it's just needle case. Um, anyway, it's gorgeous. It's made out of canvas and this is like a fake leather um but yeah I'm super pumped about this and yeah that's it <sighs> um so yeah this next month's gonna be working on the test knit hat and then I'm probably gonna start a cardigan because honestly this one's too big for um summer and I don't have any cardigans so I really need to get on to making some um but yeah we need to take a break from shopping too, for sure, because it's got a little out of hand. I feel like that's pretty normal though, so won't be too hard on myself. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to keep going. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I know I love watching knitting podcasts while I'm knitting, like probably everyone else watches them, so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping to at least have like a knitting podcast once a month and then either with like a knit and chat slash stitch and chat, it'll probably be a stitch and chat, um, or a studio vlog of some sort every other week as much as I can. Um, so yeah, stick around, come on this journey and please let me know what, what are you working on? Did you get inspired by anything? Do you, uh, um, do you have any summer plans for your knitting because I think yeah I'm going to talk about that at some point the summer plans for knitting which is turning into sweaters but do you knit seasonally curious um 
I definitely want to do a bit more knitting seasonally, but we're not there yet. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Have a phenomenal day. Stay creative. Bye.